Small Table Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G. That's at Small Arms Danny, at Trey Speed, and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We got a special guest today. Kenny yeah. Santucci just walked up on us Buddy, at I the Arnold. I can't believe I'm here because I'm such a huge fan of this <laughs> Get <guy>. the fuck <laughs> out of here. <laughs> you know what? Get the fuck out of here. Let me, tell you, let me tell you a little story about how the last time I saw you, yeah, yeah. you came to my gym in I the did. city. And he's he's like, in New York City. He's like, dude, we're going to work out every morning at 5 a.m. And I'm like, oh, I, no, I never work out that early. He comes in, and for three hours we worked out. And it's, <laughs> and it's fucking nonstop, and the guy just keeps going. I'm like, are we fucking done with this workout yet? <laughs> I'm o- I was over it halfway through. And he keeps going, and we did this for like four days straight. Yep. I, was, I was so inspired after that that I started to become a morning workout guy. That really? Look yeah. at that. Yeah. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. I got I to gotta give you some love because in the I know you was having some back trouble, I remember, around yeah. that time. And you've really, since – Last time I've seen you, like, one, physique's looking crazy, yeah. strength's back. You're killing the strong New York stuff right now. Like, yeah. you just look like you're on another level right now. Kenny. Yeah, so what happened was it was, you know, um, I was just over there with Matt Vincent at uh, okay. Not Dead Yet, and we were just chatting about that because you get to a point, like, certain things happen in your life. If you lose somebody, if you get hurt, whatever it is, and you get to a point where you're like, i got to start living more. Hell yeah. I gotta start doing some more shit. So as soon as I started to rehab my back and stuff, I didn't get a surgery. I had every fucking doctor in New York tell me, get surgery, get surgery, get surgery. I'm like, fuck that. There's no way mm. that this is some structural uh, degenerative disease at 37 years old. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. When it first started happening, I was like 36, 37. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Every doctor's like, get a surgery. I'm like, no, I'm going to rehab this. I'm going to you know, get some blood work done, do what I need to do. And in the last year or so, I feel great. Yeah, you look good, dude. And I'm like doing jujitsu. I'm running marathons. I'm, you know, he he turned it. Up. He turned it way up. Yeah, yeah, because I'm like, you know what? I've been slacking. Living in New York, you start to fall into this uh, lifestyle of drinking all the time, going out all the time. It's everything's at your fingertips, mm. so it's so easy to become a fuck up really quick. <laughs> <laughs> and I was doing that because I've been living in the city for like 12 years now. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? None of that. Like the last couple nights, I'm, I, I rarely, if ever, drink. Yeah. But I had to go out for some work stuff, go see some people. And they're like, oh, you want to drink? I'm like, no, no, I'm good. Well, I want to start way Smaller. back because I think people are going to want to hear about the MTV shit, right? Because yeah. when I – we're on Team Reebok. There were some hit, there were some was some hitters a, on that team, I bro. Said, I said that was one of the best teams I've ever been a part of. Yeah. Like, like with, uh, some of the influencers that are fucking yeah. have huge accounts that were, like, young then too. So it's been, it was a pretty cool yeah. uh, team to be a part of. But – how did you end up on fucking road rules, bro? Like, what, what, I was, what the fuck? I was younger than this guy. Yeah, yeah. I was 20 years old, 21 years old. I yeah. was in college, and a, this girl I was dating was, like, obsessed with the show. Okay. And she's like, let's go to a tryout. The, like, Obviously, you're in New York, right? Yeah, so we're in New yeah, York. Yeah. There's, they're everywhere. Um, so we go, and one thing leads to another, and a year to the day later, I was on a show. So what are these tryouts <laughs> like for, like, this reality TV show on MTV? Because... Whenever I was, I was like probably like third grade and shit watching that. Yeah. All those shows were wild as fuck. Like, there's no way my parents probably should let me watch those yeah. shows. <laughs> so I'm very intrigued. Like, what were they asking you to do during this trial? I feel like a dinosaur talking about this. Yeah, because, this is amazing though. <laughs> because now everything's like you find everyone here has a YouTube page yeah. or whatever it is. But back yeah. then, no, was, no, that, you had that's to. why you were able to separate so much. Yeah, yeah, which was crazy. So at the time, we go to an open casting call. You know, they're calling me on the phone. Yeah. This was 2004. Yeah. You know, so people are like, called you on your house phone. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> um, so good. Yeah. I didn't get a, I mean, I think the iPhone didn't come out to what, 2007 or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they called me on the house phone. They're like, hey, you know, we want to bring you along to the, the next round of trials. So the, I went through like a couple different interviews and stuff, did one on a, over the phone, and then they brought me out to California. And one thing led to another, and I get on the show, but it's like they would basically bring 50 people around a table. And they're like, all right, you guys got about four minutes to say something to impress us. So you just imagine right. yeah. everybody's like trying to be on TV at the time, right? And it was still cool to be on TV. Yeah. Now, no, nobody gives a shit. I'd rather have a big YouTube page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you get to keep all the money that way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're sitting around this table and everybody's shouting shit out. Like yeah. Everybody's like, I'm in the closet and I haven't told my parents. I want to tell them on television. <laughs> <laughs> and that one's not going to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even count anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, come yeah. on, man. That's amateur shit in 2020. <laughs> um, and then it's like you had so many girls being like, oh, I'm 
yo, I'm sleeping with my best friend, but my boyfriend doesn't know. I like the craziest shit. Everybody's like fucking talking around. This shit. And they were like, why are you so quiet? I go, I just came out here. I was like, we haven't slept together yet. So I was like, I don't want to sleep with her. I was, so the guy's like, all right, come with me. And I'm like, that that's what got me in? Yeah, that was like the first. So just a door. sideways, sarcastic, like, yeah. normal. Yeah, and I wasn't it. even trying to like outshine anybody because everybody's saying some shit. I'm like, I, I don't even have anything that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's I, pretty I was, I, At the time, I was hoping I was in the closet or something. Yeah, so yeah, I had yeah. something good to say. <laughs> So, all right, so what, what are your parents, like, what do your friends think whenever you're, like, they see you on, on the show? So when I first got on television, it was weird because it's, like, it was, again, it's still cool to be on TV. You're like, holy shit, I can't believe this is happening. Yeah. Um, so when I first got on, they were like, oh, if you ever bring anybody on the show with you, they have to fill out these releases. And I'm like, you know, they email them to you, and I'm printing them out, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to give these to my parents. That'd be fucking weird. Yeah. You know, so I'm, like, giving it to all my buddies and stuff. But... It, I mean, it was fun. It was cool. Like, the first three or four years, I'd say, like, 2005 to 2007, 2008, it was, yeah. like, still a novelty to be on television. So I'd go to restaurants and shit, and people would be like, oh, my God. <sighs> and, like, I'd get free dinners and shit, and you're like, yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. I, I had a ton of pussy I didn't deserve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, that's the motherfucking <laughs> clip right there. <laughs> Yeah. My, my question was going to be, what is <laughs> so good? What, what is some so of the weirdest good. shit that happened to you? That maybe wasn't even on, like, air. Yeah, so we would do these, like, they would bring us out to um, different, like, spring break shit. And, yeah. You know, oh, yeah, that was fucking hot. Yeah. You guys would come out yeah. to spring break. Yeah. Oh, fuck. So I went. <laughs> that would have been epic. Go ahead, sorry. Great. It, no, was, so I went to one. Um, they brought me out to South Padre, Texas. Have you ever yeah, been there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Complete is, yeah. fucking shithole. <laughs> and. It was like a battle of the bands, and they brought us in to, like, MC this battle of the bands and, like, judge it and stuff. And I'm like, why are there so many fucking fat Mexican kids possessed by the devil? Okay. Every <laughs> fucking... <laughs> every, every... It's true. Every band was, like, this Mexican heavy metal, like, death metal band. And, and you guys all were like, MCing it? Yeah. And they're all screaming into the mic. They're like... Oh, six, 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 and they're screaming in the mic. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and the fucking audience is going nuts. This is like two days before Christmas, mind you. Oh, so now I'm like in South Padre, my flight gets canceled because it's snowing in New York, so I can't get back to New York. And I'm like, what the fuck is going? This is the worst experience of my life. It's shit. The, in the hallway of where we were, some kid stabbed another kid. It's all these, like, high school, oh, college damn. kids. And I was like, everybody's possessed by the devil. They're all, like, worked that fucking Hot Topic. And then they're yeah, here. Yeah. Hot yeah. Topic. Spencer. Yes. Yeah, Spencer. It was insane. I was like, why am I here? You know? <laughs> At the so time, good. I was still rocking, like, the Pauly D look. I had, like, a yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. blow out and shit because I lived yeah. in fucking North Jersey. At the time, so, so that was right, cool. Real question: <laughs> Our, Paul really wants to be on MTV. Yeah, I feel yeah, like no, he's got I'm all very, the questions. No, yeah. Uh, so, are those shows like scripted? Like, did they give you a motive? Like, are they like trying to set no, shit up? Or what, what happens is like they do such an extensive casting process where they know you're like an introvert and you're weird right, and so. you're probably not going to get along with him because he's over the top and. So it's like it, they they put you in this petri dish, knowing that something's going to blow. Yeah. yeah. So you're stuck with all these people you would never normally talk to or hang out with. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I watch, you know, my girlfriend, she's a huge Bachelor, like, girl or whatever. It's the I, same shit. They all yeah. dabble. And I'm yeah. like, this shit's more fake than WWE. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's yeah. no yeah. way. Like, these yeah. storylines and stuff like that. So yeah. it's very interesting. Well, WWE goes off an idea. Of, like, they're, they're just pulling from ideas. Real life. Like, those yeah. people are like, I can't imagine how many people go on those shows being like, oh, I want to find the love of my life. Like, are you fucking See, serious? that's what I'm saying. <laughs> See, that's, yeah. that's my yeah. biggest thing. I don't know how many times yeah. I watch those shows and I go, who the fuck is signing up for we this? We have yeah. such a connection. It's been 48 hours. Like, get the Could fuck you out imagine of being in a room full of, like, just this, right? Just pick, what, six of us here? And being like, oh, man, I hope one of us gets a fucker. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Just imagine the conversation. Yeah. You go to a club, and you'll have, like, one guy buying bottles and, like, 12 girls around, and he'll probably fucking bang them all. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you're never going to – like, I, I can't imagine the scenario other than, like, fucking Debbie Does Dallas or, like, the fucking so Houston good. 500 – where it's like there's a bunch of guys standing around being like, I hope I'm next. Yeah. <laughs> you guys had no clue what you were in for, did you? Yeah, yeah. It was fucking awesome. Yeah. 
So, See, when we oh, sign our shit. barstool deal, we need to bring, Kenny yeah, needs to be on right. board with us. Yes. All right, Danny, your turn. I, I don't shit. know where to even go. Yeah, so, <laughs> so I'm, hey, I'm, Trey I'm, does. My, yeah, so I'm curious, like, so how, how does it go from MTV then to, like, yeah. owning a gym? <laughs> so, <laughs> great, 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 great segue, great, Trey. Great <laughs> so I, uh, I was always, I loved the gym, right? When I was 14, 15 years old, I was a fat kid. And I think that's part of the story that kind mm. of the, dragged me along on the show was it was a unique story now now everybody's like oh i used to be a fat kid now i want to go to the gym at the time i was like I, in high school i went into high school weighing 235 pounds no i graduated shit. high school being 160 right yeah. i started playing football i wrestled then i went on i wrestled in college um but i just got obsessed with working out like i i loved it right i would there was a a little grocery store next to my high school that i would steal like muscle magazines from Hell and like yeah. do the fucking workouts and I'm like, yeah, these guys have to be on gear because there's no way this guy's doing a three-hour fucking workout. <laughs> yeah. right? I would do, like, Triple H's arm workout. It's like every you, – you clear the fucking rack of dumbbells. Yeah, then yeah. you hit every arm Fuck, machine. We need that workout. Yeah. 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 Shout out. It was awesome. I did it for, like, three months, four months. I was Fuck doing yeah. the thing. Um, but after college – and then I started doing the, the challenge stuff. But I was like, all right, I need to be in good shape. You'd be shocked how many people went on these shows – and they weren't getting in shape for the show. Like, Especially I'm like, being on TV, you yeah, got to be fun. I'm like, I got to be in shape. I got to be able to run. I got to be able to climb. I got to be able to lift. Yeah, because so, you were doing, like, obstacle yeah, shit. It was, yeah. Uh, it, like, some of them were, like, bullshit, stupid things. Like, yeah. Like, carry fucking oatmeal in your Speedo 100 yards, and whoever gets the most, you're like, what the yeah. fuck are we doing? <laughs> yeah. And then there was other shit, it's, which I loved, and that's how I got into, like, doing Ironmans and triathlons and stuff, is, like, the long-distance endurance shit. Yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. the last challenge, the last uh, final challenge would always be, like, this long-distance, like, takes all day, or sometimes you sleep over there at night. Um you know, carrying heavy shit. Mm. So that's how I got into a lot of that stuff, like doing rocks and stuff like that. Yeah, Danny, 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 Danny did that shit. Yeah. He did the I, Go Ruck selection. Yeah. selection yeah. I'm doing the, the High Rocks uh, Go Ruck thing. Oh. So it's like you do that High Rocks competition. You guys hear about this? That, no, where is it? They do them all over the place. Yeah. There's one in New York in June. Uh, I think they're right in Dallas or Houston this oh, past really? weekend. Um, so it's basically like it's like five or six miles with a rock, but in between each rock there's um, – there's different like little competitions. It's like a thousand meters on a skier, oh, carry okay. heavy, oh, heavy wow. dumbbells, mm. uh, do a sled drag, Fuck different yeah. shit. That's like awesome. it's fun. It's yeah, yeah. super cool. I'll send you the link. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm, I, I, I fell in love with doing stuff like that because that's where I excel. That's yeah, where I would yeah. beat everybody else. Like some of the smaller challenges, like rope climbing and shit. I'm never gonna beat a guy who weighs 140 fucking pounds up yeah, a rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, he's just so much smaller. So. I would do really well at just just carry weight and go for the next 12 miles. Yeah, just fucking grind it out, yeah. Well, so I was doing that, and I started working with – I got to work with Joe DeFranco pretty uh, early okay. on, and I got to work with, like, Smitty. I met yep. through him, and then I started working with all these different trainers in New York, New Jersey, California. And, and the found, good ones. Yeah, and <laughs> I started going to – I started doing, like, these, like, little, you know, weekends with, like, different trainers and stuff. And I was like, fuck, I want to do this. This is fun. Yeah. You know, I and I got into the like the the nuances of training. Like, w yeah. all right, why are we doing this and then this? Mm -hmm. Right, because at the time I had no fucking clue. Well, and Joe DeFranco is such He's, a fucking G, yeah. bro. Like the to have the West Side stuff yeah. going and like he, he just sports, he, performance, sports performance he's really yeah. good man. he he's probably one of the guys who made me fall in love with it the most. oh yeah um so i got into that and then when i was off shows right because there'd be like six eight months between shows i'm like how many years did you do that for almost 10 you were on that long Holy yeah shit. i did like eight <laughs> seasons nine seasons yeah. um, i don't think i realized it was that long yeah no wonder you're so fucking famous <laughs> i wish <laughs> <laughs> i wish <laughs> um but no, so I start. I was like, I need to do something else. So I started getting certifications. I started at the bottom working at an Equinox, mm -hmm. like just fucking cleaning up weights and shit. And everybody's like, Well, you're on TV. Why are you doing this? I'm like, This is where they told me I had to start. You Got know? it. So it was. It was never like, Oh, make a YouTube video and blow the fuck up. And then, you know, <laughs> yeah. it was like I had to start at the bottom and I worked my way up. And then when I had an opportunity in 2012, I opened my first gym in New Jersey. It was a CrossFit gym because um, I got super into CrossFit and shit. Um, I had some shitty partners, 
worst businessman, but I fucking love the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I opened up Solace, which you were at, yep. with a bunch of guys. Uh, now I have my own space. I have a 2,500 square foot, like just a little private training gym. I wanted to keep the overhead low. Like yeah. anybody who owns a gym, it's like. Well, when you say you keep overhead low in New York, yeah. that means something different. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Well, it's like you guys probably have 10,000 square feet and it's 2,500 a month. Yeah, yeah. You know, 2,500 square feet in New York is $10,000 a month. Yeah, it's a whole you know? different animal. And then everything costs triple. I just got into an argument with my fucking building owner two days ago about putting a flag. There's a flagpole outside. There's permits and bullshit for everything. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I was like, the flag on the flagpole has been there for two years. It's tattered. It fell off. It actually fell off the fucking flagpole. I was like, hey, I'm going to put a flag up there. I want to just let yeah. people know that I'm here. Oh, yeah, it's $1,000 a month. I go, thousand. You're going to charge me 12 fucking thousand dollars to hang a flag? What? Are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> so I'm like screaming with this guy. I go, I pay you rent. Yeah. My rent goes up $1,000 next year each month. So now I'm going to be paying fucking you know, out the ass to just to have a space. And now you want to charge me more for a fucking flagpole? He was being serious. Oh, that's so stupid. Just like an old fucking grumpy piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> who probably sleeps on a fucking bed of hundreds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he yeah. needs that G-boy. But he needs that extra yeah. 12 fucking grand. I go, if I took 12 grand out of his account, he probably wouldn't even fucking know. No, yeah. no. So he owns like 12 fucking buildings in Manhattan. You know, uh, yeah, fuck. That's Billy, how he got. That's Billy. how he got there. Yeah, Bill, yeah. Just fucking raking people up. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, your sense of humor based around this stuff is obvious, right? Because now these guys are getting a chance to get to know you a little bit. You're also from Jersey. You have that grimy side of the love the gym, start at the bottom. Yeah. But you've been able to play, and this is my outsider view, knowing yeah. you. But like. You're able to play that people in New York don't operate like they do in Jersey, like no. in the in the gyms like mine, yeah, right? Yeah. So I know you can work in either world well, yeah. but is it like, is that tough balance a little bit? Ken? No, I, I, I think in New York it's, you know, you just have to find your tribe, okay, right? Because it, it, it definitely exists. But I think a lot of people, what I, I think I've excelled at in New York City is just giving people a place to like hang yeah. or a place they feel like at home. Because New York City is the most crowded city in the entire country, sure. right? Probably in the world. But it's the most fucking lonely. Mm. So people are so lonely. They just want to interact with people. They just want to be around other people. Because most people don't have that. I said part of the reason why I opened the gym during the middle of COVID, and they're like, you're insane. In New York City, you're going to open up a gym and blah, blah, blah. I go, listen. I go, and, you know, I just heard Rogan say this the other day. Mm -hmm. as a, he was talking to uh, Ryan Long. Mm -hmm. And... We decided as a society a long time ago that the worst p possible thing you could do to somebody is leave them alone. Yeah. Put them in a cell by themselves. You could take a fucking murderer, somebody who slit somebody's throat, right? Cold, hard killer. Put him in a cell by himself. That's the worst thing you could do to them. So I go, if people believe, and I would get into arguments with people all the time about, like, online apps and all this bullshit they're like that's the future nobody's going to go to gyms you're never going to have business i go you're out of your fucking mind yeah. people need to be around other people Agreed. if you think and if you look and this is what gave me the idea i'm sitting in my apartment and i'm looking at the building across from me and it almost looks like little boxes and everybody's stuffed in their own little box mm -hmm. and that's where you're going to live you're going to work out there you're going to eat there you're going to fuck there like you're in this box your whole day get the fuck out of here yeah. you gotta get out <laughs> you gotta meet people you gotta interact with people yeah. i think it's so important i think it's a it's a lost skill that uh, like younger agree. kids aren't you know don't have the chance to it's like they canceled two years of school i couldn't imagine like being a senior in high school missing my senior year or like wrestling yeah, you know tough. going out and doing stuff in the middle of COVID. Uh, you know? You know, what's inter interesting about that is I was a senior in college at Ohio State while COVID was going on. Like, I, I was in my last semester. Yeah. They're like, you're done going to class. But honestly, like, most of the time, going to the fucking gym made that Ohio State's campus yeah. feel small. For sure. If you go in there, you see the same fucking people every yeah. day. You become friends with them. Even if you don't talk, talk to them outside, you still got that connection. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, like, everybody has their, like, gym friends. You might not, like, go out and hang out with them yeah. or, like, invite them to your house but you have those guys that you like to banter with there were so many guys like when i had the old gym it was like 700 people in the gym right like i had a 700 membership base and there were definitely people like you love you have a good banter with yeah. you joke around with and stuff you like seeing on a daily basis and when they're not there you're like that kind of feels off a little yeah, yeah, yeah so 
but Kenny yeah. fucking Santucci yeah. in the flesh, baby. I'm a, <laughs> listen, I'm a huge fan of what you guys do. I love it. And I was actually going to text you today when I got in yeah. and be like, hey, if you guys are working out at 4 in the morning, I'm coming. Tomorrow, bro. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in. Yeah, we were there today. I'd but you can come to. tomorrow. Yeah. It's, a, it's a lighter crew on Saturday, but we'd love to have you. Yeah. I'd love to show you the gym and the yeah. office, man. I'd love to see it. How Fuck far it. are you guys from here? Uh, it's about... 30, 35, 35 minutes. minutes. Yeah. 35 okay. minutes. Bad. Yeah. Cool. You staying down here, I'll come get you. Yeah. I'll yeah, gas I'll, up the I'll rolls and come get you, player. I'll uh, gas up the I'll rolls. <laughs> gas up the rolls. <laughs> I got you, Kenny. I'll take Subtle. an Uber up there. Oh, okay. Yeah, how well, much I'll, is an Uber in Ohio? Uh, uh, well, that far easy. might take a little bit. An Uber that far might be a little expensive. Hey, well, expensive. I had a uh, I paid $110 69. to go to the fucking airport this morning. That's probably 30 bucks. And that's a 17-mile fucking... I'll be up Sorry. early. I can come get you. Okay. That'd yeah. be fun. <laughs> All right. So, so what are you doing now? Like, you doing, like, YouTube? Like, so I got my, no, I don't do any of that shit. I just don't think I'm interesting enough to do any of that shit. Um, <laughs> I, would, I, I would beg, I beg to differ. differ. <laughs> I, I would love to have, like, a podcast and stuff. I just never really did it. I used to host a show for MTV. I, I hosted the Jersey Shore After Show for, like, <laughs> oh, no shit. The Jersey Shore <laughs> After Show? Yeah. Okay. So for like like Cole, Cole's no, like great. totally. I yeah. feel like yeah, we need to. We I need to mix. We need to collab with Kenny yeah. for sure. It's so hard. Now we got a home when we go to the city. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. NYC, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll be there. Yeah. Anytime you guys want, love to have you. Uh, no, because for me, it was I was used to showing up. Somebody puts a mic on me. They got yeah. camera guys and shit. Now for me to set all this, I'm fuck. There's too many wires here for me to know what's it's going not. It's, you can figure it out. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I literally, this system right here, I bought when I was at MP, figured out how to use it myself. And Good then shit. as these guys yeah. started coming into my live and help, helping everything and then being from behind the camera to in front of the camera, yeah. it's like yeah. it's been a, cra a crazy. Well, you guys are lucky because you have this guy kind of guiding you through the world, but I don't understand why all you young guys want to hang out with this old fuck. Ah, <laughs> they keep me young. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need it. I love when young kids come in the gym because they're just so full of steam. And, yeah, man. Yeah, you know, I'm like, I'm slowing down, but it's like you got to keep up with them. Yeah, it seems like you. It seems like your shit is really. I'm I mean, trying. I'm you're try getting a good groove, Kenny. Yeah. So right now, it's you know my big focus is the event. So I yeah. do this event called Strong New York in the city. We need I, to come up there and fucking podcast. Yes, yeah. it would be awesome. So I last year we did it. I had over 900 people show up. Oh, nice. I did it. I rented out Chelsea Pierce, which is like uh, this yeah. massive Sounds facility. Sounds gangster. Yeah. And uh, what, you know, what had, time of the year is it? September. Okay. September, all right, October. so we can come this. So I had, right. I had uh, Don Saladino, Gabrielle Lyons. Yeah, yeah. I had a bunch of great speakers, and I flew in a bunch of uh, people to, like, teach classes. So we had, like, classes going on. Uh, I kind of set up a bunch of, like, boots for food and stuff. We did a cold plunge. Oh, yeah. It's, so I want to blow it up this year. I wanted to do something similar to this. Mm -hmm. Not as big. I don't yeah. want to. I want it to be, like, a little bit more intimate. Like two, but it's your own expo. People. Yeah. That's Fuck sick. yeah. That's fucking so, awesome. Yeah. Fucking Kenny Santucci. All right, well, we got to wrap it up. Kenny, where yeah. can everybody find you? Uh, at Kenny Santucci, uh, the Strength Club NYC is the gym, yeah. and then at Strong New York is the event. Dude, yeah. it's fucking this awesome fucking to have awesome. you on, bro. It's, it's, bro. So it's an honor to be around you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Roundtable Podcast, I'm your boy, Corey G, at Small Arms Danny, at Trey Speedin, the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak, Kenny Santucci. Thank we you, out. guys.